Hey, what's going on, guys? Man, MK29 here. Um, yeah, we're gonna go over some um, stuff I just recently saw on um, Fox News, which I don't normally watch like that. But I was I came on something interesting against uh, this woman named Rebecca Coffler, I believe. So I did some, I did a little search on her real quick over Google, and uh, clicked on the Twitter page, looked at her bio, which made me laugh a little second. She was like uh, Russian born, uh, what it was, Russian born. Uh, American by choice, and then she was like canceled by the U.S. I'm like, what the hell? So, so yeah, I was like, what? <laughs> At first, I thought maybe she was another race. I didn't know she was Russian, so I, I was like, okay. And she's supposed to be some sort of um, uh, was it intelligence officer, uh, analyst, or something like that? So we're just gonna go into it because she was explaining like Putin's strategy and all this stuff about that recent, you know, the missile barrage that he had over going over in Kiev, you know. Or in Kiev or the capital of Ukraine. And um, yeah, we're just going to church at, just look at this. This is some crazy stuff, man. Crazy stuff, guys. 100% I expected it, uh, Todd. Based on the Russian doctrine, attacks on Russian territory are supposed to be met with forceful retaliation. Uh, just because the rest of the world does not acknowledge Crimea as Russian, the Putin regime do consider it Russian territory, and the same with the uh, four annexed territories. And so Putin will not stop from here. He will only escalate. And our own president, Joe Biden, just recently warned us about the possibility of nuclear Armageddon, which is where we're heading right now. Right, Rebecca, and I'm going to read this. Ukrainian President Zelensky said this this morning. They are trying to destroy us and wipe us off the face of the earth. The air alarm does not stop throughout Ukraine. There are missiles hitting. Unfortunately, there are wounded and dead. Please do not leave shelters. Take care of yourselves and your loved ones. Let's hold on and be strong. So does it shock you at all that the Security Council was supposed to meet with Putin a couple of hours after this happened, that was what was supposed to happen. But yet, here you have that top propagandist uh, with the Kremlin. He was demanding a show of force against them. He said um, it's not responding to the enemy's actions, but breaking their plans and striking unexpected blows. All right, let me see if I can kind of squeak. This lady talking up, talking up quite a lot. I'm like, Jesus, I remember. <laughs> she's talking up quite a lot. I'm like, he's like, slow down. But yeah, just the thing I don't get by Zelensky. Again, you can keep leaving these messages, but he's not talking about peace. This is the only thing that takes. It's just like he, you don't hear this guy talking about none else. I'm going to show you guys another clip with, with this guy recently with Tucker Carson, which was had me like cracking up. And he's just like saying, he's asking us for more money again. And here we go again with this begging, which he's always doing. And let me see, can I go? We're going to just go ahead and jump it like over here a little bit. Let me see about it right there has done is uh, is a diversion. The narrative about the Security Council meeting later in the day is a classic deception to achieve tactical surprise. This retaliation should have been expected, including by uh, President Biden and President Zelensky. We do pray for Ukrainian people. They need to brace. But what I want to mention here is that the Washington establishment does not explain to the American people why it is that Putin is fighting so hard. Ukraine is part of security perimeter uh, for Russia, even though we don't recognize it. But it's the same thing as our Monroe Doctrine. Imagine if Russia or China try to approach Canada or Mexico. No sane military commander, including Biden, although at this point uh, many people question his sanity. We would not allow such thing to happen. And so neither does Putin. It's an existential battle for It's an existential battle. See what I'm saying? This is the problem here. And this is something they don't tell American people. They make it seem like, oh, why is he invading Ukraine? Why is Ukraine is the way? No. That's right. She just said it. They, we have a Monroe Doctrine, you know what I'm saying, over in the U.S. You, no one can come over and put weapons over, let's say, in Canada or Mexico. You can't just come over and say, hey, man, yo, yo, I got some nuclear weapons over in Mexico right now that can hit all within your states, all within your cities. You know what I'm saying? They ain't going to allow that. The first thing that uh, the U.S. would do is try to go up into that country. They're going to have to invade or whatever. They'll try to figure out, okay, oh, what's going on here? They'll try to do it because they did it back in the Cuban Missile Crisis. 
they did they were about to invade um Cuba when um you know the Soviet Union back then had a um had some uh, nuclear weapons in um you know stationed in Cuba and they're, they're, the American soldiers were there they set up in the coast of Florida and they're about to agree to go ahead and invade Cuba but they had worked out some sort of agreement with the, uh, with the back then president that was it Gorbachev I can't pronounce his his name properly like some bad Russian names with the guy they had him and Kennedy worked something out and they was able to avoid the whole missile the Cuban missile crisis which we're currently in right now we're in the Cuban missile crisis 2.0 but as you heard she said it that's what it is Ukraine is almost like the U.S. well the which is our stupid administration went over there and started this whole mess you just they came out and paid these people cities just being out to fight the Russian army and NATO too NATO's an anti-Russian alliance they needed to start up something with Russia. I don't know what it is. They got against. They just. They got to start up something with them. And so here we are right now, going against this. Uh, this current crisis that we all looking down at. For him, and he's going to do everything possible, and he's going to switch to a different strategy coming forward, to to make sure that Ukraine does not enter the Western orbit of influence and especially NATO, about which he warned us many times. It's a red line for him, and he's not bluffing. Rebecca, a very disturbing update from our... Yeah, he's not bluffing. <laughs> Rebecca said, she said she's Russian. She know how the Russians think, you know what I'm saying? She got to know how the, most of these Russian people think. She even know how... She wrote a book on Putin, called it a Putin's Playbook. I didn't check it out yet, though. But yeah, she knows how this, how you know, Putin, you know, is thinking about certain things. So, like I said, she says she's, she, you know, what I'm saying he's changing up the strategy. He's changing up a whole lot of things now. You know what I'm saying? So, my heart goes out to the Ukrainian people. Like I said, they caught and they caught in a crossfire because they caught between this mess, which is our government, NATO, sponsoring this, funding this, giving these people billions of dollars to take on the Russian army for a regime change. And I'll play. Like I said, I'm gonna try to. Play a little bit more clip of this, and we're gonna jump over into the other Tucker car just to prove a point, guys. Because this is like a bunch of old folks, they're just out of touch, they're not they don't know what they're doing, they're just out of touch with so much stuff. And they're like, Oh, we want to regime change. They even said it themselves, so they just they keep coming out with all this BS, man. And they keep dragging this on loan, they're dragging it out. It's them, it's really it's, it's sad. It's really not Russia, it's, it's our it's our government, it's administration, and it's NATO that's dragging this out, and it's not really pulling them like, bro. If y'all don't stop this, they just they trying to de-escalate it, but they keep coming at it over and over again. Our own Trey Yinks, he's saying this morning the Russians are aiming at civilian targets in Ukraine. This is why officials there stressing the need for more air defense systems. This attack is significant, Rebecca. As you know, this is the first time they've hit the city center of Kyiv in a long time. They did a little in the outskirts, but this is really the first time in months that they've gone for the heart of Kyiv. We know he can't do it himself. The entire doctrine was developed by the general staff. And my intelligence assessment is that Putin is switching strategy to what is called the new generation warfare, where he's going to target exactly what he's targeting right now, the civilian infrastructure, with uh, cyber attacks, space warfare operations, underwater strikes, just like what we saw with the Nord Stream. Uh, we have a piece on Fox Digital right now on the website called Space Armageddon. It's not just nuclear Armageddon that's on the table here. So things are unfolding exactly how Putin has planned and unfortunately our own security apparatus she says space Armageddon is not just nuclear guys so they're going into space right now what does that mean for us eh, they're, they're, already, they're already experiencing right now with the laser weapons that can disable satellites so if they can kind of figure out how to destroy these satellites man that's not going to be because most of this this targeting especially when it comes to these ICBMs and missiles they need them satellites up there for a reason, man, and lock in them to these coordinates. If you can disable your opponent's satellites, you're going to have a huge advantage, especially where they, they especially if they will shoot off a nuclear weapon at your country, it may just not make it there. <laughs> like, for real, it may not. It's just like, it's going to be off course and not going to know where to hit at. So, if you can knock their, their satellites offline or blind them, man, that's going to be really bad, man, because you can't retaliate. you like, you you're like, a, you're like, you know what I'm saying, you're like a sitting duck. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, what can you do if they if they can hit your satellites at a at a at a crazy like a crazy speed or something, man? Like disable you right away, like instant, man. You screw. Hit the power grid, the EMP attack, you screwed again. So like I said, they playing. I don't know what's wrong with these people over here, guys. Like they're playing like a twisted 
stupid game, like I say, for a country that's, again, that doesn't serve no interest to Americans. They just don't. Tucker said it bad. It just really don't. He's, he was telling the truth on that. Like, what? Like, this this is not helping the American people. It really not. Misdirected intelligence resources when they should have been paying to the Russian threat. They were doing investigation after investigation of former President Trump, you know, and the non existent collusion theory that they themselves concocted instead of taking seriously the Russian threat in developing first a deterrence strategy and next a de escalation strategy. And President Biden at this point has no de-escalation strategy no de-escalation strategy she said it best Rebecca Deshi said that I had to agree with on that see what I'm saying no de-escalation strategy they've been escalating since February guys it's been going on since February you know what I'm saying they have never you barely when you hear these people talk you don't even hear the word peace come out of their mouth they don't say don't even mention it it's almost like a curse like bro you say peace <laughs> we on your neck you know what I'm saying? You cannot actually say peace negotiation. You can't say none of that. And they won't say it. They would not say it. That's why I know something's off. They like laser focus on taking down Russia and Putin. They just like, bro, you got to go. And they want Putin out. They want to take over the government. They want to dismantle it, the whole government in Russia and putting on people like they want to westernize it pretty much. And, and, and that's why Putin came out and said what he said. I'm not going to sit here and, like, and allow y'all to westernize Russia. That ain't going to happen. If that does happen, before it happens, we're going to have a nuclear war. I'm going to end. He's like, uh, Scott Ritter said, like, once, I'm just going to end everything. And I'm shooting off every nuclear missile you can ever think of. And like I say, these people are crazy. I'm going to leave it off there because, like, like I said, she said it. that Just that alone just let you know where everything was at. Like, she said, she's like, man, these people just don't know what they're doing. And they just don't. You know what I'm saying? No de-escalation strategy. Like she says, she also said Putin been working on this for like 20 years. The man been playing this for 20 years because he know it was coming. And we got these old folks just to show a little bit of Tucker Carson, which he had the AOC assignment. Check it out on YouTube, like I said. But it was funny. Like some guys came off. They was going off on um the Cortez the woman, the, the Latina woman, I believe. <laughs> and man, it was like, bro, you getting us into the nuclear war? And people was, hey, bro, it was two guys snapping on it. They're like, bro, you about to get us Oh, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is a nuclear war. We ain't playing around like this. Like, y'all guys, y'all guys pushing for something nobody over here is pushing for. And these old folks, look at these old people, out of touch with reality. We stand with Ukraine and... Are morally obligated to ensure the brave Ukrainian fighters and the Ukrainian people have the security and economic aid that they need. What we're doing here is very important, supplying weaponry and security assistance, government and economic assistance, humanitarian assistance. The supplemental appropriation bill is a down payment on the security and success of democracy. Glory to Ukraine. We want the victory for Ukraine, and we want defeat for Vladimir Putin. Regime change would be great, but we realize that that will not happen, but defeat must happen. <laughs> See what I'm saying? This is what it's all about, guys. This is a regime change. She, the black woman said it best. I'm, I'm sad to say, but sister, you, you your mind is somewhere else because that's bad. We want a regime change for Russia. We would we like a regime change, but we know that's not going to be possible. Like, of course not. That's not going to happen. You think, come on. Y'all, this ain't a little country that they can boss around. That's how they're looking at, oh, we can just bomb them and... And we can take most of the, you know, this out and we can just install a puppet government over like they did with Ukraine. They bought, they bro. I already know that they bought Ukraine out. $66 billion? Come on, bro. I already know. They bought Zelensky out. He's a puppet. They bought him out. That's why this man don't ever, this is why every time you see Zelensky, what is he doing? Best. He's either asking for money or weapons. He does not say peace negotiate. He doesn't mention the word peace at all. Because they told him so. They're like, bro, you mentioned peace? We ain't sending no money or weapons to you. We're not going to fund you no more. As simple as that. We're going to let you build your whole country on your own. We ain't going to be at no parts of that. So, like I say, this is crazy. Oh, so it's humanitarian assistance. Really? Did you look at the bill? No. It was a military funding bill. The real point of it was buying arms. More than half of it, $24 billion, went to military equipment, weapons. $19 billion went directly to the war effort in Ukraine. So, okay, if you're an out of the closet neocon. All right, let me go back. You're going to go ahead, go to Zelensky real quick. I'm going to end the video after this one. This is pretty funny. 
This is Zelensky yet again asking, again, the administration, which is our stupid administration, for $38 billion more, guys. $38 billion. I just told you guys, they just, they already gave this guy $66 billion. Where is most of, where is all this money going at? Okay, so you got a question that why is you guys throwing that kind of money over in that country like that? Y'all ain't doing it for Haiti. Y'all ain't doing it for all these other countries that's in distress right now. So again, where is why is y'all pumping this country with this kind of money? So let's let me know that you guys are in direct war with Russia. This is all it's spelling to me, and that y'all y'all putting y'all trying to pay y'all way into a regime change. That's pretty much what they doing. Anytime this guy come along and ask for money, look at this. Look, this I'm just gonna go play the clip real quick. This guy is asking for money, guys. Look at this crap. Cash at the very moment. Our own economy and our own borders are collapsing. Watch. Hmm. At this time, we have two uh, key financial needs of the country. That's $38 billion to make up for the deficit of our budget for next year, and other $17 billion that were verified by the World Bank and needed to rebuild the critical infrastructure. We need also uh, targeted credits in the amount of $2 billion to rebuild the electric energy infrastructure after the destruction and to expand our export to Europe. We need credit limits to purchase gas and coal for the uh, future heating season. The scope of this year's support uh, should be not less than $5 billion. What? So <laughs> Look at Tucker say, what? <laughs> That's exactly what I'm looking at, bro. Like, what? <laughs> he's like, I need a five billion dollars. I need a twenty billion here. I need another forty billion there. They got damn, just ask for a trillion, bro. They might just give you a trillion dollars right now, bro. Cause god damn, like, bro, how much are you gonna keep begging? You know what I'm saying? Like every time he's not talking about peace. Watch dude, he's not even mentioning it, bro. Like I'm going to go ahead and, and get into the table. We're going to go ahead and negotiate a peace deal with Russia. None of that. None of it. How much more money can he keep asking for? That's the problem here. And they keep looking at Biden like, Biden, how you keep get Biden is like, oh, I'm going to stab Ukraine as long as it takes. That's, that's the first thing I'll tell you. We're going to stab Ukraine as long as it takes. Like, bro, America, like the man Tucker said, American people are suffering right now. The economy is in the, cut, in the gutter. We're already in recession, which they won't admit. We're in a recession right now. Currently, we're in a recession. That's soon to be Depression 2.0. They won't even announce this. They not even, bro. I see why the country felt so bad. I feel like as as Americans, why our country got so worse because we kept getting into these endless conflicts. And when they get into the endless conflicts, guess what happens? They neglect the country. The country falls to the wayside. Every American person, yo yo. We so interested in these other countries' affairs, the meddling and all this crap. We we doing regime changes and oh lord. Uppity foreigner in a t-shirt demanding money for his critical economic needs? We have critical economic needs too, buddy. Who are you, troll? Go away. <laughs> what? Since when does that guy have a claim on our treasury? So this is the job of people like Sandy Cortez to remind us again to break the spell of hypnosis the U.S. Congress is under. We don't owe this guy anything. Not one thing. That's true. Good luck, pal. That's true. That's it. And as our economy degrades and our border is gone, that guy's lecturing us with some Christmas list. Like, I want this, that, and I want a bicycle, too. You better send it. Quick. <laughs> Talk <is> stupid, bro. <laughs> he's, he's over there like with a Christmas list. <laughs> that man's a clown, bro. That man's a clown, bro. Americans need to wake up, bro. Gotta wake up on this stuff, bro. This man's a straight clown. I'm gonna leave it off there, guys. Thanks for watching. That man is a freaking clown, bro. Check the video out. Like I say, Tucker, AOC, is just another student. And like I say, look at the beginning of the video. It's two guys going off on her, bro. They're like, you about to get us into a nuclear war? They was like, bro, they were going off on her. I wanted, I wanted to show the clip, but I was like, man, i, I probably do it another time. But yeah, just check the video out on YouTube, man. But uh, it's sad, man. They, 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 it's like he's saying, he's shaking down the Congress for more money. And they're going to keep, like you say, what you going to think Biden going to do? They're going to they gonna give it to him. $38 billion. Bro, we just gave this man 66 billion. Bro, this is like the most expensive. I never seen anything like that. I like, bro, something's wrong with these people. Something's wrong with NATO. Something's wrong with um 
This administration is just off. It's off. It really is. You don't have no. You hear no one talking about no peace negotiations, bro. None. Just none. What's up? They just. It's non-existent. Here we got a, like you said, a guy in a green shirt telling them, "Hey, y'all about to send me some more money? I'm <laughs> saying I need more. Yeah, y'all gave me sixty-six billion, right? Uh, man, I need another thirty-eight billion on top of that. I need another like a shakedown, bro. Like, bro, it's insane. Just freaking insane and it's sad at the same time." A bunch of old folks that just disconnected, man. They don't know. They don't really care for the American people no more. It's just like we just sit here and just keep funding this over and over again. Most of that money is going back in their pockets anyway. It, it, it has to be, bro. Like you finna send thirty eight billion over there. You sunk forty billion. You sunk sixty six billion. You been like, bro, like billions after billions after billions. And this man just shaking them down. Just literally sitting over there like, yeah. I guess they might be phoning him up, like, tell yeah, man, tell him that you need 30 bit, we'll send it to you. And then it comes right back into their own pockets. I think they must be telling him that too. Like, yeah, man, you come out one again, tell him, ask for like um <laughs> they might be on another line. Yeah, ask for like 40 billion or 50 billion. Yeah, we'll go ahead and prove it. Everyone's gonna be right on the board to prove it. Just freaking ridiculous, guys. I just I don't know, guys. It's disgusting. I'm praying for our country, man, because these people really, bro, we under attack right now. They really trying to get a lot of people over here like hurt. Like real, like bad, bro. They trying to get, they ain't lying, bro. They trying to get us into a nuclear war with Russia. Nobody asked for, and like I say, we. I'm trying to. I'm praying to God that everything kind of stay cool. Cause like I say, we trying to make it throughout this year. But if they don't try to calm this thing down by sometime next year, bro, we might be looking at the possibility of a full blown nuclear war that nobody asked for, bro. No one. We got nuclear missiles popping off everywhere. Just like nuclear is the thing right now. They throwing the word around like crazy. Nuclear this, Armageddon that. Oh, oh, God damn, like, bro, y'all gonna slow this thing down. Uh, uh, NATO, oh, you know, we gotta take the Russians out. Like, come on, this stupid ass alliance. That should have never been around still. Keep on approaching this man, lying to the man country. Oh, we're not gonna expand, and they expanding all like crazy. And F you, man, F you, we gonna go on your borders, put up weapons on in Ukraine, and what you gonna do about it? They, what are they telling the man? You ain't gonna do a damn thing about it, Putin. Now, nah, you got and Putin, like, what? All right, you'll see. I ain't going to talk. I ain't going to talk. I'm like these damn weapons talk. That's what he's that what he telling NATO. I ain't going to talk no more, bro. When you see these nukes coming at your ass, then you, you'll you get the picture. That's how that's how you're on blank. That's how Putin looking at it. Like, bro, y'all been disrespecting this man for so long, bro. Y'all on this man borders. Russia can't do that over here. They can't post their stuff up in Mexico or Canada. They know that. That's a red line for us. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, y'all don't, y'all don't ran around this man red line so much that it ain't even funny no more. And man, like, okay, okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm let these news do the talking. <laughs> That's exactly where he's at right now. This, I'm praying to God these people don't continue pushing it, these old digital people, but this is where we at, guys. Thanks for watching. More is on the way. I just wanted to show this quick video. This is freaking ridiculous. Pray for us all. I'm out, guys. Peace.